Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. I am a firm believer that a strong public education system unlocks the dreams to our children's future. As a new governor takes the reins, what's in store for education? For the first time, St. Francis School includes boys in its annual Aloha show. One middle school student spent her summer climbing to new heights. On the island of Kauai, Lanakila Kitchen serves up more than meals. In Hana, a legally blind high school senior has great visions for her future. And back on Kauai again, we will meet a champion bodyboarder. All on this episode of Hikino, coming to you from Kamehameha Schools Maui, home of the Warriors. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hikino. Can do. We're here at Kamehameha Schools Maui in Pukalani on the Valley Isle. Kamehameha Schools Maui started as a two-house campus in August of 1996. The houses had three to four bedrooms for teaching, socializing, and dining. The school enrolled 80 Native Hawaiian kids in the grades kindergarten through third. Over a course of many years, the campus expanded itself into three levels of education, elementary, middle, and high school. Kamehameha Schools Maui now enrolls children grades kindergarten through 12, making a total of 1,100 students. Our first story takes us to the island of Oahu, where Roosevelt High School reporters attended the inauguration of our new governor. On December 1, 2014, Roosevelt High School reporters covered Governor David Ige's inauguration at the state capitol. Do students feel changed will be coming with our new governor? As someone who came out of our public schools and who graduated from the University of Hawaii, I am a firm believer that a strong public education system unlocks the dreams to our children's future. It means holding education at all levels up to a different light and looking at new ways to empower schools and to help our children grow and prepare for life. Students at Roosevelt High School voice their opinions on the topic that will affect them the most, education. I think that the governor should be focusing on environmental sustainability as well as using clean energy. And I believe that doing that, we have to begin at an earlier level of education, starting with elementary and intermediate school. And the one thing is we can't do is continue budget cuts, to continue sacrificing the opportunities students have to explore newer ideas where they can find their passions and find whatever they do the best. One thing in particular that I noticed that I wish we could be improved on is the time the teachers have with us as students. I noticed that over the course of um, my years in um, schooling, uh, I noticed that the teachers are slowly being taken away from us in a sense. That there's less and less time for them to come and, and invest their time in helping us succeed. I think he is um, going to improve Hawaii in the sense of he's um, not going to do anything new per se, but he's going to, what do you call it, improve on what Abercrombie missed. So he, I think he's going to support, really support the teachers. As Governor Ige takes on the issues of the education system, he says that the traditional values of Hawaii will be his guiding principles in the challenges ahead. What has always defined us is our aloha for each other and for others. That's truly who we are. This is Abigail Lipani from Roosevelt High School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're back at Kamehameha Schools, Maui. Our campus resides in Aapuea, one of the smallest Ahupua'a or land divisions in the Moku or District of Kula. 
There is a legend that tells of an owl named Al Pueo and her conflict with a man named Kopoi, who angered her by smashing her eggs. In retaliation, Al Pueo gathered owls from all the islands to wage war against the people of the Ahupua'a. All of the men and women in this area were destroyed, including Kopoi and his wife. It is said that the sky was darkened above the valley by the many owls who fought in this battle. Our next story takes us back to Oahu, where for the first time, boys at St. Francis School participate in the school's annual Aloha Show. St. Francis School has always been a place of change and growth. That change was seen and shared with family and friends at their annual Aloha Show, which ushered in a new era of tradition. When we turned co-ed, we really kind of needed to look at how we would incorporate both our female and male students into the program in a positive way. And so it sort of just lent itself to replacing uh, what was previously uh, the father involvement to having some of our male students escort the girls in and do this together. Aisley Nakamasu, this year's Aloha Show King, took his leadership role to heart and taught the very first court of princes their hula. Um, I started dancing around the age of six or seven and I danced under Ainsley Halemanu. The main challenges was trying to balance it out between the guys and the girls because I also taught the senior girls dance. So theirs was kind of a bit more on the feminine side than teaching the masculine side for the princes. Then you're going to just kind of bend with your arms up. The boys were really, really willing to learn and they were really enthusiastic. And I think what I liked best about it was a lot of them were not dancers. And by the time they finished, they were dancing the hula and, and having a fun time with it. It was a nice way to see growth from, from all of them. And then your left hand is going to go straight up. And then your right hand. Well, I got started dancing for the Loa Show because a lot of my family members are really involved in their culture and they dance a lot of hula. So I decided to give it a try. My best experience was the sense of camaraderie between me and my brothers. We worked very hard on the dance and it just brought us all closer and we all bonded. I take a lot of pride in representing the school and saying that I was one of the first princes to dance in the Loa Show Court, not many people could say that. If given the opportunity, I would definitely do this again next year. I'd say that going to each practice was really fun because I got to build the bond with my brothers on the court. and. We all just had a great time. For the low show in the future, I see many good um, possibilities. Like I see more princesses, more interaction with the boys, more fun dances, more just more in general. Like it's going to be awesome. This is Alexander Tumulip from St. Francis School for Hiki No. We're back at Kamehameha School's Maui. This district is known for the clouds and winds that fight above our campus. A legend tells of cloud warriors named Naulu and Ukiukiu. Naulu is from the south of Haleakala and Ukiukiu from the north. These cloud warriors battle non-stop for the possession of the summit of Haleakala. Ukiukiu was usually victorious, but every now and then Naulu would push him back. From time to time, both cloud warriors call a truce, opening a clear space between large masses of clouds. This is called Alanui Olani, or the Highway to Heaven. Our next story takes us once again to Oahu, where we meet an eighth grader at Wheeler Middle School who rose to new heights, while her classmates spent their summers at band camp or the beach. <laughs> Climbing Mount Kilimanjaro was amazing. I really like bonded with the people who I had climbed with. Reaching the summit, that was the moment when I knew I had literally just done what most people don't do in their lives. Planning to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, Africa took time and effort. I trained in North Carolina, we um, did this a four mile hike pretty much every weekend because the first time I was barely making it, but at the end I was, it was like I could run the trail. Being a military dependent also meant moving during training. 
When we moved here, we were doing Cana Trail and like Diamond Head because it's like all stairs and things like that. Just just to like b build my muscles and my legs. In addition to strengthening her muscles, she had to become mentally prepared. 16 more laps to go. It's just a matter if you think you can do it because after the first two days, it's more mental than physical. Like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I haven't had a shower in days. I just want to get off this mountain. This feat is even more impressive considering Macy was diagnosed three years ago with a serious medical condition. EE is an autoimmune disorder, which is when you eat certain foods, your body sees them, sees them as like toxins. That, that's where this trouble begins. And it can cause your throat to swell so that you can't breathe or acid reflux or anything just as simple as being really sick for a few days or out of it. I, I can't have this. It has vegetable oil. And my mom was looking to see if there were people who had EE in the area or who had something like it so that I could like meet somebody who had gone, who was going through the same thing. And she just came across the Climb Kilimanjaro for EE website and she was like, hey Macy, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, sure. Climbing was a way to meet new people and also for the group of climbers to raise awareness and money to support research for EE. We all raised $98,000 for this disease and that's more than I ever could have hoped for and plus I summited so that's pretty cool. Macy definitely caught the climbing bug. You can do anything, maybe not eat all the foods, but you can do anything you want to in life regardless of this disease. Just one more lap. I got this. I got this down. This is Matthew Stock from Wheeler Middle School for Hikino. We're back at Kamehameha Schools, Maui. Do you take any foreign language classes in school? Maybe Spanish or Japanese? Our school requires us to learn Olelo Hawaii. Each grade level focuses on different parts of the language. In sixth grade, students learn basic Hawaiian words and phrases. In seventh grade, sentence structures are taught, and in their eighth grade year, students learn advanced words and complex sentence structures. As young Hawaiian men and women, we feel that it is important to preserve our language as much as our traditions. This story takes us to the island of Kauai where students from Chiefess Kamakahale Middle School take us on a tour of Lana Kila Kitchen. Meet Kanae Soto. She is the cashier of Lana Kila Kitchen in Lawai. She takes the customer's orders, makes plate lunches, and counts their change like any other ordinary worker. But what most people don't know is that she is just one of many successful graduates in their job training program for adults with learning disabilities. I think it's about Four years ago, I started as a trainee. I worked very hard. Lanahila Kitchen Kauai is a takeout restaurant where you can get good food for a good cause. Lanahila Kitchen is um, a restaurant for one thing. It's a lot of things. It's a training facility mainly though for individuals who have learning disabilities. We are a nonprofit organization that helps train people with disabilities so that they can go out in the real world and find a job and like live an independent lifestyle. So if you did have a disability, think about it. How much harder would it be to find a job? And, and who would be there to help you? Who, who would be there to train you? And what we do here is exactly that. We give them a job, they make a wage, and they get out of the house. Once we feel like they've gone as far as they can in learning what we have to offer, we set out to try and help them find jobs. Lanakula Kitchen is a social enterprise of Lanakula Pacific, a Hawaii-based nonprofit organization. It's actually a big organization that started on Oahu, and not only do they help train people with disabilities, but you know they take care of them, they teach them. Lanakula in itself means victory, and in Honolulu, it's been around for 75 years. But the trainees aren't the only ones getting something out of it. So are the trainers. A lot of them never had a real job before, and when they, when they come here, they learn a lot in how to be independent. 
and I love what I do. It's a job like no other job you could have. It's so fulfilling to see trainees come in every day, want to come in to work. They help me to stay focused and stay positive. And they treat me like a, like a part of the big family. Everybody has dreams, and so we want to be able to offer, let those dreams come true for these individuals. Lanakila Kitchen Kauai builds independence for challenged lives one plate at a time. This is Alasia Navor from Chiefest Kamakahela Middle School for Hikino. Hikino is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hikino Can Do. We're back at Kamehameha Schools Maui, standing inside of Kahikili Gym. Our students participate in the Independent Middle School League. This league allows students to compete in sports such as volleyball, basketball, cross country, track, and golf. Although the games are competitive, more emphasis is placed on student participation and learning the sport rather than winning and losing. Most of the schools that participate in this league are private schools on the island. However, there are a few public schools that join in as well. Our next story takes us to the other side of our island, to Hana, where we meet a senior at Hana K-12 school who has big plans for her future. To most, Megan might look like just another ordinary teenager, but what one might not realize is that when Megan was born, she was not expected to survive. When she was born, the doctors gave her a 10% chance of surviving. Uh, Megan was born with retinopathy of prematurity which means her retina had um, not started growing and didn't attach, so she had no vision. Megan also was born with a lot of um, other complications. We had to wait for doctor reports, and we honestly didn't know if she was gonna make it to the next day. Megan went through um, an intense surgery for her eyes, which helped get back most of her vision, but not all. She today is still legally blind. It was the support of the community that helped Megan to keep moving forward. I feel very blessed being in Hana and um, raising Megan in Hana because we are surrounded with um, awesome people. Um, we get phone calls, we get letters of prayers, of thoughts that people were sending to us. Well, in general, some of the struggles I have is reading the board, reading small print on paper and small print in books, and reading off menus. Balancing is pretty hard because when I'm sitting down and I get up, my legs start to shake. When I want to learn an instrument, my fingers have a hard time with bending and it gets really frustrating. The things I like doing are basketball and soccer. I enjoy singing because it tells a lot of stories. There is no problem to be, God cannot solve it. She has been asked to sing at community events such as school, community programs, football games, and statewide church revivals. She even won several awards for singing. Megan is a special girl and in spite of her physical struggles, she has persevered and is not only an inspiration, but a positive influence in the community. Megan has overcome a lot in her life and is set to graduate from high school and has big goals for her future. Uh, her goal when she graduates this year is um, to attend Ho'opono, uh, which is a school for the blind. I want to make my own music along with owning a recording studio. She has been through a lot and there's much more that she is going to go through, but like I said, we know that. She can do all things if she puts her mind to it. This is Precious Helekai from Hana K-12 School for Hikino. We're back at Kamehameha Schools Maui. We have hardworking men and women here at the dining hall. 
They labor tirelessly to prepare meals not only for the 1,100 students on campus, but also the preschool children of Paukukalo in Wailuku and Aapuel in Pukalani. Each day, a few of the dining hall workers drive to Wailuku to deliver the nutritious meals. Although it may seem like a huge task, the dining hall staff feel that their efforts are well worth it, as providing healthy food to our students is their top priority. Our final story takes us back to Kauai, where island school students introduce us to a champion bodyboarder. Dave Hubbard, drop knee world champion, began his bodyboarding career to follow his brother's footsteps. When my brother Jeff turned professional, I was here at Island School in middle school. I thought, hey, if my brother can do it, I want to do that too. I became a professional bodyboarder through gaining enough competitive highlights and getting enough pictures that a company saw value in me. And so they wanted to endorse me as a professional bodyboarder after I graduated high school. He continues his successful bodyboarding career because of his passion for the sport and because of the feelings he experiences in the water. It's a really comfortable space. To me, it's my passion, so it's, it's a time that my mind is able to kind of clear. I'll think of all sorts of stuff, but it's best when I'm not thinking about anything and I'm just allowing what's happening in, out in nature to just come through. It's a real like visceral experience to and intimate if, if you're getting connected with the water. So that, that happens best when I'm not thinking about anything. Dave Hubbard has won numerous bodyboarding titles, most notably the world title and men's division title. My highest point might have come recently when I was in Portugal. Uh, I got my sixth drop knee world title there, but at the same contest I won the men's division, but I had never won a men's division in a world tour event before. And since I've been competing on the world tour for about 10 years, you know, seeking at least uh, an event championship, that was, that was a pretty high point in my career. Because of the inconsistencies of sponsorship as a source of income, and because of the want to contribute back to the community, Dave was prompted to start his own bodyboarding company with his brother. The industry goes through ups and downs, and it's difficult to have a long-term sponsor that has um, integrity and also that you have a future in. So it was a mutual idea that my brother and I had to become independent from sponsorships on the board level. And so that was going to allow us to kind of dictate where we could go, start controlling our own destiny with a board company. My role in Hubboards is I'm a consultant for my brother Jeff. Jeff's pretty much the boss. He's in charge of marketing and promotion and design. And so I consult for him if he wants some advice or my opinion on things. I hope that it can grow, become stable and self-sustaining, and ultimately that it can help sponsor young guys and do a lot of positive things for the sport so that the sport can grow. David looks forward to continuing competition as well as shooting photos and video to promote his brand. As for the business side of it, he's happy to keep contributing to his brother's efforts to grow the brand and give back to the sport they love so much. This is Jacob Dysinger from Island School for Hiki no. We're back here at Kamehameha Schools, Maui. On our campus, each of the buildings are named after Ali'i or Chiefs and Chiefesses of Hawaii. This particular building, which is our auditorium, is called Keopuolani, named after the highest ranking wife of Kamehameha I. Keopuolani, along with Queen Kaahumanu, were instrumental in ending the Ai Kapu, or eating prohibition, that forbade men and women from eating together. After it became clear that the gods had not punished them for their disobedience to this eating ban, the couple was broken. Well, we've come to the end of another episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Be sure to tune in to next week's episode for more proof that Hawaii students Hikino can do.
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.